everyone. I am Amy. I'm Julia. And this is Women, Worth, and Weddings. And this is a exciting one because we have our team with us. We have we Kathleen and Jessica, yes. who are both uh, planners on the team. Um, Jessica also has a bartending company, so she does a lot of of our clients doing on the bar side. So we are excited to have you guys. Thank you for joining us. Yay. Yay. We're in a new space today. Different. <laughs> As you can tell, it's a, it's a little masculine. We don't really know what's behind us, so don't pay attention to it. So <laughs> no more pie. <laughs> Whatever. Don't that know what it means. But so. we're excited. This is gonna be this is gonna be a lot of fun. So our topic today, Julia, is what? A lot on like communication with um between vendors and our couples. Um, you know, there are a lot of things that we see that vendors don't communicate properly to our couples and then we end up having to explain it to the couples mm -hmm. or you know there's a lot of things that our couples get blindsided by because they don't know what they don't know and so communication is a huge thing um vendors not following our timeline and the importance of our timeline yes um often we get dismissed even though we're the planner um and then how we've seen vendors talk to wedding party and guests yeah you know, just a lot about our experiences with vendors. Yeah. So let's ask, let's start with, um, let's start with Jessica. <laughs> 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 so what is like one of the moments where you've seen a, another vendor go rogue and you're like the hell and you know, it's going to mess things up. Um, when a bartender denied the man paying for a wedding for two, with, uh, of two sprites. Mm. Yeah. And the dad was like, I paid a lot of money for this. I need you to find me two sprites. And the bartender um, went over his whole contract with me instead of handing me the sprites. And um, so then I went to the year at Heart Meadows and stole two sprites <laughs> and brought them to the clients. So that was the silliest thing I've ever seen because it was $2 worth of sprite. Yeah. Take your battle. And, and you are a man that just charged a significant amount for your bar services. Yeah. Contract or not, two sprites for those kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was so annoying. I think that people, not people, but some vendors get really hung up in the minutia of their contracts mm -hmm. and they forget that this is like a living and breathing thing that you're working with mm -hmm. and people are going to, you got to be flexible. There's some things that you, there's boundaries. You don't, you're not flexible on some things and that's why they're in a contract. But so because, you, so you say that, so why why would a why would that be the case like maybe because this a lot of people don't realize that like sodas and drinks outside of alcohol sometimes isn't included mm -hmm. in that and typically why did that happen because th those sprites were used for the mixed drinks is that why yes. yeah so what they paid for was just for their mixed drinks and they told me that they were giving out more soda that night than alcohol and it wasn't in their contract to provide soda yeah. So I just feel when you're paying thousands of dollars for um, an alcohol package and three children need Sprite, you just send your bartender out, you go get Sprite. And if you feel you need to send an invoice the next day, do so. But yeah. I think that the the bride's father being so upset and mad that he paid them like close to $5,000 and he couldn't get two Sprites for his grandchildren. Yeah. So I find it very important when I talk to people and I bring them in, I explain the soda and the water, probably the third bracket down of our conversation. Because mm -hmm. it's like, there's more people at the bar drinking soda, water, and tea than they are drinking alcohol, as silly as that sounds. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, people don't think about the non-alcoholic drinks. They, I think there's a lot of assuming. And then it's like, well, who did you assume would bring that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it in any of your contracts or invoices? Mm -hmm. There's always a lot of consuming. Like, assuming. Yeah. So like, Communication but the bride, is just so important. Yeah, but the bride and groom don't realize that unless yeah. they're told. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, oh, yeah, we do need water and tea. Well, you don't necessarily need water and tea if you just get me a whole bunch of water and soda. Yeah. You know, and to be honest, I go through all the soda. I'll have yeah. diets left and that's it. Yeah. So and then they can also mix it with the alcohol that they provide if they don't want the purple drink. Yeah. You know, so it's like it's just good to have. Nobody's denied anything. Yeah. I think that really does fall on the planners because – you know, we have, I, I used to just trust like the caterer mm -hmm. to say, you know, are we providing a drink station for you, like water, tea, and lemonade? But then I was finding we would show up to weddings and I was having to do like tea runs and go yeah. to, yeah. Yeah. Had, yeah. I had to at a wedding that Kathleen and I worked. I went to and like raided Harris Teeter's sweet tea mm -hmm. section 
because there was nothing to drink. Yeah. So that's why it's become such a huge part of our when we're doing a layout to be like, all right, do you need a drink station? Who's providing your drinks? Even if your caterer provides your water and your tea and lemonade, they leave. Yeah. Or like most of their staff leaves, only a part of them stay. To or the it's the not night. available during cocktail hour. Yeah. Right. So yeah. when everybody's sitting outside for 30 minutes under the sun waiting for the ceremony, mm -hmm. then a 30 minute ceremony, and then they get to me, they want two bottles of water and a cocktail. They immediately chug it and they wrap back around. Yeah. So cocktail hour, I go through 40% of their inventory that we, yeah. because it's just that much liquid going through after a hot ceremony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. So to how to combat that, I love when they do bottled water like in a basin or like some kind of container for guests as they come into ceremony, especially when it's hot. So then they can have water, mm -hmm. but they're going to hit that bar. Um, and, you know, to your point, Julia, making sure that you have cases of water for the end of the night mm -hmm. and for after the um yeah, because caterers will leave. Yeah. After dinner, uh, sometimes they leave, and then there's nothing from 7.30 till 9.30 to drink other than alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Everyone wants a bottle of water on their way out. Yeah, or a cold Coke Yeah, yeah. or a tea. I mean, sometimes I feel like it's just easier to have the beverage station from cocktail hour till the end of the night, period. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. there should that just should be required. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Yeah. I've seen um, communication-wise, what I deal with a lot is the layout and rentals, and the amount of times for our month of couples that I have to explain that your caterer needs rentals from you because mm -hmm. it's, it's never talked about. There's some, there's some companies that are like, okay, you booked us. Great. These are the rentals that we need from you. I, yeah. I love that. But I've had so many couples up until like the month of their wedding be like, oh, I didn't realize I had to provide a whole kitchen, a, the buffet tables, the linens, the table and linen for a cocktail hour for food table and linen for the drink station like all of that i mean it adds up yeah. and so and then some caterers want warmers and yeah like trays trays yeah, like there's so a much. venue and there's no kitchen at their venue yeah, yeah. and then well, they're like well yeah. what are they gonna cook out in the yeah. stream outside yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. And when we're a month of like we don't do their rentals and so you know we come in a month of and then we're having to fix all the communication errors and that's yeah, why we started doing that. rentals for a month of because I got really tired of being surprised. Yeah, I'm just like, mm -hmm. send me your rental list. I don't care what kind of package you have. I want to see what rentals you have because almost every time I see an error. Yeah, almost every, every time. single time. If you don't know, you don't know, you're not going to get your rentals correct. Yeah, or it's wedding well. day and we're like counting linens and they're like, the caterer shows up and they're like, where's our linen for our appetizer table? And we're like, yeah, where's our drink table? And we're like, or the DJ's like, did they get me a table and a linen? I'm like, leave. And it's always the DJ that comes an hour before ceremony. Nothing is left. And he's like, where's my table? And we're like, hmm. Let's talk okay. about DJs Good. aside of Travis. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a DJ that needs a table and linen, tell the couple we need a table and linen. Let's talk about communication, DJs. Yeah, DJs. You don't want to hear about your bingo event in 1979. <laughs> yeah. I had an awful one recently. Just DJs. So I say, hey, who you need one, Travis? Yeah. Hey, you need one, Travis? Yeah. Yeah. And if you're wondering who Travis is, he is the one recording us right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He is our go-to all things music. So FMG. Google it. Google me, Barbara. I don't know that Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> we had a Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So Kathleen. What is one of the things that you have come across where a vendor has gone rogue and it almost ruined, like it really kind of made you have to scramble? Um, I did this one wedding and I don't want to break talk about the bar again. Uh, okay, well, this bartender had no idea how to make drinks. So my assistant literally was being a bartender that night. Anyways, let's think of a different thing. Um, I had a caterer show up during cocktail hour. Um, really bad communication leading up to the wedding. Um, we don't really love to text people. We try to keep it an email and phone call, but I even went down to the texting level, texts were answered. Um, so, you know, you kind of just say a prayer and hope the wedding day goes well. And, you know, his crew was there, but this one caterer did not show up until cocktail hour and everything falls back on the planner. So I got death stares from the couple, like, where's my food? Where's my appetizers? They had already gotten married at that point. So I just think 
any vendor you need to like contact if a planner is reaching out to you a month before two weeks before the week of and you're like you know everyone has stuff going on in life but yeah if you have a contract and someone's reaching out to you respond to that yeah, respond yeah. like we just want everyone's day to go smoothly and i think it literally is a team effort everyone has to work together for the day to go smoothly so um you know everyone got their food and everything but it definitely falls on our back if does. other people don't do their job and don't yeah. answer yeah. i think that's what i mean this is why we're so passionate about it is because it doesn't matter it it's always our fault yeah. It doesn't matter what the vendor does, it's it's our fault. So we have to we have to make you toe the line because we if not, then we are getting we are getting in trouble because of your foolishness and nonsense. Yeah. So and yeah. it's like our bad review because a whole different company doing a whole different thing than us. I mean, we're coordinating and planning and running the day. Like we don't we don't cook the food and serve it, but we'll get the bad review for their yeah, their yeah. It's coffee always, service. It's always how did the planner handle that? Like, oh, yeah. that's happening. Oh, that bus is in a ditch. What's your planner doing right now? Oh, that. <laughs> we've had that. Yeah, we have had like, that. Like, well, we are getting our car and we are going back and forth. That's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. that was one that I have nightmares about still. What about you? What's one that sticks up? In the... That one, that one was a big one. We, um, but I think Just for like me. Because there's one recent. There's one recent. I want to hear that one. Which one? About... Just, just like a month ago. Oh, um, when you were at the other wedding pacing for three hours trying to figure out what to do because yeah. of communication. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it. Okay. Because um, <laughs> that was scary and I wasn't even part of any of it. I was like, I don't even know what y'all are going to do. We had a venue the night before a couple's wedding are you talking about that? check everything that I had sent her over a month prior, everything that we had talked okay. about, every meeting at the venue with her. She finally sat down and looked at everything. And the night, the night before, before, 7 p.m., oh. the night before the wedding. Not even the night said, before, like, like 9.30, where you're scrambling yeah. around trying to figure out how you're going to fix the, this. Yeah, the first 12 hours call later. was at 7. Yeah. It was in midnight when I went to bed with the final, this is what's going to happen. Um, called the band and said, you can't set up where you're going to set up. And the band was like, it's the night before, okay. And they called me, and, you know, because the venue – had an incident the month prior. They decided that no band from now on can set up where they wanted to set up. And the couple didn't have a band because of... The band backed out because the venue... Um, basically scared the band off. Scared basically the band saying off. Yeah. like a month ago we had to file a, a whole complaint. insurance claim against the band because they set up there and broke some tile. Now, instead of, you know, after that incident, reaching out to all the couples they had and being like, hey, this is an incident. If you have a band, just let you know they had to set up outside because you need to set up outside. You need a generator um, because we didn't have time because it was the night before the wedding and, on a Saturday and, on a holiday, holiday. weekend. Um, we could not rent a generator at nine o'clock at night the night before wedding. And the wedding was on a Sunday. So. Oh, you were with me at the wedding that I was at when we got the call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Too. I was yeah. wrapping up the so offer. Cleanup in, crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically it came down to venue saying the band can't set up inside. Band can't set up outside because they don't have a generator. Couldn't rent a generator because it was already too late for that. And the venue basically left us in a situation where the couple could no longer have a band. Because there so was you, nowhere for them yeah. to set up. So you leave a bride and groom not with their original plan. 24 not even less than 12 24 hours before and then you guys have to stay up mm -hmm. and try to figure it out and, and they're still disappointed through, with no band. yeah we went through every solution i was going to take my husband's trailer and truck go pick up a generator from home depot like i was like going through every solution but nothing was good enough for the band or the venue so, so we ended up calling their because they had a dj for the Just ceremony, the ceremony. So he called the DJ and said, hey, this is what's happening. They were friends of them. They were friends of theirs or something like yeah. that. They knew them somehow. So they um, said that they would stay through the night. Yeah. So they That had, was a huge. And we paid for it. Huge. Yeah, we paid for the DJ to stay just because we felt so bad for the couple, even though none of it was our fault. And how many months do we plan weddings? And this is something that happens the night before. Like to me, as any owner of any business, I would have just got through it and handled it. Yeah, make yeah. the clients happy and then know next time I need to check every single contract prior so that my rule stands every yeah. time. Like, I, I would have never taken that out on my, mm -hmm. my couple. Every error, whether it's our 
issue or not, I feel like teaches you to like double check on something though. Mm -hmm. So when a couple doesn't have tea or lemonade, you're like asking that right yes. when you see yeah. them. And the yes. next time, do you have a band? What kind of floors do they have at your venue? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah What's well, crazy because we had so many meetings at that venue telling the venue person where the band was going to set up. And like the couple had talked on and on about how excited they were with the venue person. And she never said anything till the night before the wedding. Yeah. So, And then she was, I had to um, use my stern Amy voice the day of the wedding with yeah. her. So. That was a big one, actually. That, was actually, that, is, that, that is terrible. I pushed that way down. I, <laughs> I know, but that is so terrible. I like, know. think about that couple, honestly. Like, their dreams are a band. That's a big deal. That's somebody, that's something when they start planning their wedding, they want from the, the very beginning. And it wasn't just a, like, a normal, like, wedding band. They were, like, a legit. They're a 10-person band. Like, and they like a play band. events. It's called, what is it, uh, 80s Nation? Have you heard of them, Trav? Yeah. Like, they have, like, the whole, like, camcorder things on there. It's like a whole production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like a big deal. They were my favorite weddings are the bands. They're, yeah. it's, it's like a concert. You know, it's just expensive. Yeah, yeah. The bands always take forever to pack up. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's why Julie's like. We're like, mm. <laughs> I'm sitting in my car with my headlights pointing right at them. <laughs> you know, like, I can't leave until after you do. <laughs> Throw the violin like in the car with a cupcake in their hand, and I'm like. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. Wrap it up. Take that cord and wrap it up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they need a Lord. lesson from Travis on how to pack up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have another one for Kathleen, though, too. Oh, no. Remember what's her name? Um, no. Do I say her name? You can say Travis. Oh, okay. Uh, florals. Um, oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, that one. That uh, one's a good one. That's oh, a that's really good, good one. one. <laughs> Sorry. I just popped my mic. I feel like I'm always there to a degree or kind of hasn't. The drama a, you know... follows Jessica. Yes. Uh -oh. It is me. <laughs> Anyways. Yes. So I was a lead on a wedding in the fall. Miss Jessica was there and time was ticking and we were calling a florist. She was 20 minutes late. No worries. Traffic hours 30 minutes late okay text no answer an hour i send a voicemail an hour and a half email and another call we are all you know the couple was doing all of their photos before ceremony so you would need your flowers your bouquet your um boutonnieres all the things she does not show up until hmm, 45 minutes before ceremony oh yeah and She's like throwing, Jessica, she's like over throwing here, throwing like toilet paper <laughs> over tree limbs, pretty much is what no, she, you gotta, how did she pull up? Oh, how she pull up? Well, I don't know because I can be rude and I don't want to be that rude. It was just awful. She just had a, a driver. She had um, a whole bunch of crates with melted candles all left and right. Nothing was put together. Um, she did, drove her car through the ceremony, all the chairs, <laughs> everything we had set up all day, drove it right past every chair onto the main place where the couple was getting married there was tire tracks in the grass and then she took her her vitamins took a string wrapped it around these drapes and threw them over the tree yeah, sitting down the tree. Right. sitting so, down didn't bring a ladder nothing uh, nothing yeah and it just looked like toilet paper hanging from had, the tree had no centerpieces families northern family real aggressive they're trying to but have us from the north so yeah well i'm raised by them and so they were wild and we were trying to handle um, the florist the best way we could because clearly something was wrong with yeah, her. Yeah, just on the verge And we were trying to be crying. compassionate. But then at the same time, the family is like ready to like take her and her car and throw it off the premises. So it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. it, was, it was probably the worst vendor experience I've had because but it was like, what do we do? She has no florals and she has like legit toilet paper thrown around a tree right now. And again, I, I was back so, on us. Yeah. How did so, I mean, how would we handle it? I kind of mm. filled Jess in on like what needed to be done. And I sat down and I made 10 centerpieces. And the lady just looked at me and was literally giving me corrections on what I was doing. And I was what like, What kills me is when you end up like helping a vendor do something and then they're mean to you while yeah. you're helping them do their mm -hmm. job. Or they keep telling you 10 more minutes and it's like four hours. Yeah. And I have to then maneuver the, you know, the lineup around her because she's sitting in the middle of the the reception area around a whole bunch of flowers when I'm like walking the bride out. Yeah. So oh it ended up working out. They were thankful, but. As soon as she left. Because we as pushed her off as fast as we could. Yeah. We got it done. Thankfully, always have two people at a wedding. And 
thank God we know how to put some florals together. <laughs> and Kathleen and I made a friend out of that because oh, then yeah, the bride that, contacted us that. for months. Yeah. Handling that. Stuff. And we got the floral tip. So basically yeah. every <laughs> vendor that you can have, I think besides like a live painter, I've never had an issue with live painter, knock on wood, but we've had to help them do at least every type of job. Like down to fixing a cake to uh, helping bar, helping catering. I've done hair and makeup because they're about to walk down the aisle and the maid of honor still hadn't had her makeup done. Um, like you name it, florist stuff. We've helped basically every vendor because they were about to ruin something major. Yeah. You, Even, you have to. You have to jump into whatever the role was. Do you remember that um, that time that I got to MC? Yeah. They wanted okay, so, to MC. So <laughs> what is the worst one that y'all, like me having to grab the mic from the DJ was the worst one for me to fill in on. Because mm -hmm. that is like getting everybody's attention and putting your mouth up and everybody staring at you when he's supposed to be doing it. That was the worst one for me. I'd have rather done those 10 center pieces in two seconds over grabbing that mic mm -hmm. and I do an introduction and all that. Did that. Yeah, because Travis wasn't there. <laughs> that was awful. Worst I one. I know what mine was. I mean, they is. all kind of blend together. Yeah. I mean, I've had some I've had some really crazy things happen that you're just like, well, what yeah. is happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were we I mean what were you thinking? Yeah. Kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why did you do that? Like what well, it always comes to my head, which doesn't seem as big of a deal, is it's always the cake for me. Yeah. I'm like, I've called and been like, hey, you're supposed to be here 20 minutes ago. And they're like, yeah, I dropped the cake off. I'm like, no, you didn't. Drop it off at a different venue and had to go grab the cake from that venue. I was having a wedding happening at that venue. Bring it to me. I've had cakes, you know, like, hey, where were you? You're supposed to be here an hour ago. Oh, it fell in the parking lot. Like, you know, I've constantly had cake issues, yeah. which to be fair, cake is so fragile and like transportation of it. But do you see that like, new box thing that they have? It's like, it's called the cake, the cake. Um... What is it called? My, it just left my brain. What's the thing that you like turn and I like you get in safe, cake safe. Um, Jesus. <laughs> but it can't, it's, I think it's a slide in it, right? Does it prevent huh? it from sliding no. in the It side? has this thing and it goes down and now they're going to have to smooth out the top of it. Mm. But there's a thing that goes up and goes down and they click it in and it holds the cake still. It won't go anywhere. They literally turn the box. And it was stayed in place. And it was a three-tiered cake. I love when people just come and, like, the cake lady is just, like, putting it all together there and sets it all up. And it's yeah. like, thank God. Julie and I always get in cake issues together. We're always, yeah. like, slaving away, cutting it, and we can't even pick our heads up. Oh, oh I yeah. learned, ladies. <laughs> I like cupcakes. <laughs> I learned how to cut a cake this weekend from um, one of our favorite caterers just eat this one of the girls helped me cut the cake and she showed me how to cut the cake she mm -hmm. you cut the, a circle out of the middle and then you cut around the circle and it per makes perfect little slices like you slowly go in more and more yeah yeah doing that i was I like that's a lot of work it was, slice, but, but it there's was like, like 200 so people staring at me i'm just like it's not pretty we but it's edible. <laughs> you know? and we're just like dying <laughs> laughing <laughs> i just had good luck i've never had to cut the cake i usually go to the caterers really? about oh 20 God. minutes I'm like are you gonna do this and they're like yeah i'm like cool <laughs> and i just leave <laughs> Now, that doesn't I, have now how to cut a cake. Too. Delay I mean, and I are like cake. carrying this three tiered cake I down. Know, like, everyone I mean, I have with you. Them. We have yeah. them, like, but not on my own. I always cater. Cater, like, she's yeah. usually like, it's not my contract. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. I've spent like an hour and a half cutting cake for a large wedding one time. Just like the, the line did not stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was just there in front of like the Like whipped cream under your, your, your yeah. all your fingernail. or Well, not really because you got gloves on, but still, it's just like I've had it all over my arm before. Yeah. My assistant for that day had like gone to eat, eat dinner and right when the cake was happening she went to go eat real quick and then so it was just me and then she came back in like 40 minutes later and she was like oh, you're, you're still cutting cake and i'm like i'm still here i couldn't ask for help because i couldn't leave the table <laughs> it's just like oh gosh oh man so fun what so, else communication leading up to the wedding day obviously if you need any rentals let the couple know it's not awkward it's not an awkward conversation you know what's awkward is the showing up to the wedding and being like oh you're supposed to get that for me that's awkward yeah it's not awkward saying what you need mm -hmm. you need a table tell the couple they have a table please yeah put it in your contract because if you don't have a planner like us that asks these questions mm -hmm. like you're gonna show up and there's not gonna be anything for you i don't know what other people do I don't when they don't have a planner that ask if you just have a day of what happens how does it how does it go i don't know how that world is someone tell we me we don't do day of because we it 
would be a shit show and we'd be miserable if we did a day of. Mm-mm. Oh, I have one more. It's really quick. I've never heard of a catering company not providing leftover boxes and like most caterers or will... taking all the food with them after well completely. that's what i'm saying mm-hmm. is the couple was like because that's one of our jobs at the end of the night is we put all their food their leftover desserts cake all the things on a table help them pack up and the couple's like where's my food and so i go into the kitchen with the last guy in there and like the food is gone it is yeah. the kitchen is sparkling and i'm like oh is it in the fridge and they're like no if they don't order um a to-go package with us, and we just take it all home. Mm. It's like that, communication on that. And what? I'm just like, again, it was a month of, we weren't <laughs> reading contracts then, and I'm yeah. just like, and then I have to be the jerk at the end yeah. of the night being like, guess you're not having your 10K left over. I don't want down the line. They threw it all away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rizzy, <who does> that? <laughs> I know. I'm be like, these assholes. Back there, you should go talk to them. Send they threw back. a whole piggy of bacon away at my one wedding, like an entire thing of bacon, like this much. And I was like, "You guys could just take that somewhere." Yeah, you know. And they're like, "No, we're not allowed to." And they can also that uh, they can't take it with them. And I'm just like, "So you just throw this away?" Yeah. They're like, "Yes." Like, what is wrong with y'all? Just put y'all just got this envelope this thick from them as a gratuity. You can't put these in boxes for them to have breakfast for dinner or breakfast tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it's very. Yeah. But it was that animal. It was like the whole pig it was in the garbage. I was like, man. Yeah. It's a lot of bacon. Thanks for that image. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. Poor little yeah. piggy had to die for that. Well, Why I've been dealing with camp. a lot recently is I'll send emails, texts, voicemails, and then they claim that I've never reached out to them before. Yeah, yeah this is a huge, huge thing. I, like, I don't even know. know. World. <laughs> it just burns me up because then it makes us look bad to the couple when the couple's like, hey, they finally reached out to me and they said they never heard of, of you. They don't know who you are. And I'm like, did they check their email? Yeah. To Search. just like just be like, no, I've never heard. And then not actually like look to see. Like Well, that's why I always flag those emails and then I respond with the couple on it so they could see yeah. that I keep that I have actually. I'm like, I have actually in here you go. If you're gonna make me look yeah. bad, I'm gonna make you look yeah stupid mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> like if i shouldn't have to pre- be texting and yeah. leaving voicemails i shouldn't have to be exactly doing that. yeah like preferred vendors are are wonderful because you kind of already know what's up yeah yeah it's like everybody walking into a new place to work and nobody knows what's happening versus everybody walks into a place to work and they know what's going on mm-hmm. yeah regardless if if it's sam and sue or whoever it is we just have different details that day mm-hmm yeah it's good i mean that's like for the couples out there like when your wedding planner and even your venue says i have a preferred vendors list it's always nice to take that into consideration because especially your planners because we've worked with the people that are on our preferred vendors list for so long that when we're all together it tends to run really smoothly because Mm -hmm. we trust each other Mm -hmm. and we've been there yeah done that so so is there what else we got um not following our timeline are not even caring that we sent them a timeline and layout. Mm-hmm. Like, I yeah. feel like sometimes they don't even look and like day of they show up and they're just like, where am I setting Can't up? And I'm question. like, it was <laughs> marked on the layout. They're like, where's this? It was marked on the layout. Like they have, uh, are they doing this today? I'm like, that was on the timeline. Yeah. Like, do they look? I no. have, I've right. had that. I had that happen a lot. Um, this past wedding that I did I had a lot of questions from a vendor about the timeline and I'm like, and then he was like, I never got it. And I'm like, I sent it. I actually sent it to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And every single vendor was on that. Yeah. So everyone got a copy. They all saw you on there. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Because we see if it bounces back. Yeah. Like, yeah we some... get. Yeah. If it doesn't show up in your um your inbox, we get notification that we got bounced back. That's when we call you. And we're like, yeah. hey, we're trying to send this to you. So we've talked about all the things that really get on our nerves so let's talk about our favorite vendor oh we didn't talk about them talking rudely to guests oh yes that's a good one we'll yes the wedding party we've had some photographers and stuff recently that have been like super rude to the wedding party yes and anyone can give you a bad review yeah mm-hmm. anyone yeah i had a it's twice now recently i've had an entire wedding party hate the photographer mm-hmm. i've had them hate the caterers too just because stupid stuff that's not usually it's not the caterer's fault typically but it's just like you have to be careful because caterer tends to have the biggest staff at a wedding everyone has to watch their face yeah yeah that was, gonna what wedding any, was that 
you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. Um, it was this past it's, yeah, it's spring. Not, yeah. The, they wanted the kids' meal. Yeah. Like the adults wanted the kids' meal. And obviously, you're an adult. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get chicken tenders and mac and cheese. I'm sorry. You're not going to. It's not, not going to happen. Um, and the adults were mad that they couldn't get the chicken tenders and mac and cheese. But on <laughs> at the same time, there was a lot of chicken tenders. And the mom's like, I ordered 52 chicken tenders. There was three kids. Yeah. Wow. yeah the, it's just one of those things where you just have to like – but the bride, but they were right with it though. To me, because if I ordered it, I paid for it. I want it, regardless of who's eating it. Yeah, but the vendor was just like, it's only for the kids, and like the way they came off upset yeah. the guest. Yeah, yeah it would upset me you too, because that yeah. goes back to like just the sprites. Like, just do what they yeah. want you yeah. to do, yeah. and then talk about it later. Mm-hmm. Like, wait yeah. till they get back from their honeymoon, or call their mom tomorrow and explain, hey, this really upset me last night. I served a lot more soda, or I had enough chicken mm-hmm. tenders, and then talk about it. Yeah. But in the moment, just go. Because you're it. also not going to get a bad review if you maybe call and button up whatever it was that was the issue. If you do something during their wedding, my mom would be the first one to bark at you, mm-hmm. even if I, she was wrong. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so what do we love? Let's talk about the vendors that we love. Let's give shout outs. I have. You go first, Kathleen. We'll go in. We'll go in a line. Ooh, Travis. <laughs> I send Travis a lot of introductory emails, and it's always good to have a good DJ and photo booth. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? I love Yvette with X Beyond Beauty. She does hair and makeup in Charlotte and travels, and she's done a lot of our brides and myself. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who do you love? I love curated events because they'll always answer me. Like day of, I have my contacts, phone numbers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I never have to like struggle for communication with them whatsoever. They, for them, like I've never had like a major issue with them. If something's mm-hmm. missing, they'll bring it to me day of. Besides one wedding like two years ago, <laughs> yeah. but you know they're amazing. Um, we also love. I love in Charlotte if I have a wedding with um best impressions. I because love best how hands on they are. It's amazing. I just walk in. I feel like I'm at a, like a hotel because oh. the amount of like the bar, mm-hmm. rentals, catering, like their staffs everywhere. Like doing a wedding at the Van Landingham Estate. Yeah. They're just like all over it. So, I love I that. I love Best Impressions. Shout out to you because you're amazing. Their team is, they take up time with us. They like try to help mm-hmm. us. When and they they're... give you all the good food too. Yeah, yeah. They give you all the good <laughs> food. It's annoying. And I know this is like, I don't know how positive talk. I know. <laughs> I know we're being positive right now, but I really hate when I see it, the couple having such good food, like so amazing. And then they give me a dry chicken breast and or like a sandwich I know. salad. I know. I'm like, but they're having a Chinese bar over there. And they gave me this. What is this? This is I don't see that option out there. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, like I am, and it still costs them fifty eight dollars for us. Yeah, to, and they still want the box. They still want us to love them because we're the planners and we give them business and we've gone to the tasting and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we still get like the little to go box of like a sandwich and chips. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Please don't do we're that. We're hungry. Yeah, we've been working for and we are hours. Your best friends. We are going to mm-hmm. give you business because we are the ones that be like, oh my god, their food is amazing. You have to use them. But how can we say that if you give us a little to go box? With a sandwich in it and a bag of chips and a cookie. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. the tea. That's the tea. Moving on. We're being positive still. <laughs> so I have, I love um, Thin Space Productions. Yep. Mm-hmm. Love, 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 love her. I love um, Marley Photography. I really like him a lot. He's in Charleston. He's such a good guy, just in general, like a good person. Um, but he does really good, like dark and moody photos. So if mm-hmm. that's your jam, he's really great. Um, I love Heart Meadows event. You got to give a shout out to Heart Meadows. Um, there's so many. I love um, Bakey's at Ion does mm-hmm. cakes. Love them. Publix does great cakes. Depend like they're a little secret. Um, who else do I love? Aisha. We love Aisha. I love Aisha. We love Mary. Mm-hmm. Mary Go. I didn't realize we were doing a whole list. I was trying to do like two <laughs> and go and make it I just quick. Love so many. I love vendors. I love our vendors. Are we so love behind so the bar. Charlotte. Our Charlotte. <laughs> Over here. I love, actually, I do love Jessica. Jessica. I'm, I just touched her boob. Okay. <laughs> um, with my fingernails. Look how pretty there. I know. I was going to say, you have time to get your nails done and your toes. Yeah. So busy you are. 
Yeah. Mm. Gotta make time for myself. <laughs> yeah, get your hair done too, Jessica. <laughs> if your planner's in front of you with their roots down their head and their nails messed up, it kind of takes your professionalism down a little bit. Yeah, that's me. Don't look at me right now. We're in off season. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But we have who am I forgetting? I don't want to make anybody upset. I well, I already they already said you. <laughs> said you. Okay. Well, I love Travis. I do love Travis. Travis and I have been writer dives for many years, so he is my person. Um, who else? I like Smoke Pit in Charlotte. Sarah yeah, City Barbecue. Their staff is really good. City barbecue Smoke Pit. I do love Smoke Pit. I had Smoke Pit for dinner on I I have Saturday. It killed my stomach, but it was so good. I did two nights in a row, and it killed my stomach both times. Well, I still have brisket from my wedding. Oh, from my you had so much leftovers. leftovers. <laughs> Same. Hmm. That's all I can think of right now. But if I forgot about you, I'm sorry. I love you. If I, but I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head. <laughs> Jess. All right, y'all. Y'all know I'm bad with names, and um, I'm gonna pick that one girl from that one time. That's what I'm trying to say too. Because <laughs> see, the thing is, is like you know, I kind of do more of like the. I don't want to call a month of photographer. I know, but I don't remember her name. Oh. Um, <laughs> I will say whoever I'm... Kathleen used for florals. I've worked with oh. them three times. Lake um, they are. are they're very. I just sweet. I, I, I love us, mm -hmm. but if you're outside of Juju, that she that would be who I hire immediately just for decor. She yeah. cleans up. She's great. She's Comes sweet. She's in, in and night. out. Mm -hmm. She did great. Um, I'm trying Finding to think. Videographer. Um, Monroe Pedal, Pedal uh, Monroe Pedal Shop. They I've worked with them twice. She's great. They are hands on. They like handle. They do way more than what the contract says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, first look. It was called first look. First look. Um, photo and video. Photo and video. She's in Charleston. She did a great mm -hmm. video for Maddie's wedding. It was. Oh, I need them for her. Uh, she I, is amazing. Oh, okay. So, so those. what's his name? Um, Lee. What ha What is his business called? The Alchemist. Okay. So, he's a he's a character, but his turnaround for what's her name's wedding was fast. Fast, and those photos were great. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, he was taking pictures of me when I'm walking to the cool the room with the cooler. I thought it was kind of strange, but at the same time, that I'm like, he was kind of he's kind of like a storyteller if you look yeah. at kind of his photos. So it's a little different vibe. But I would recommend him. I've recommended him three times to Art yeah. and Pride since then. He he has some really good photography. That's my vibe. Everybody's vibe is different. Lee yeah. with Jesus shoes. Yes, in yeah. the hat. In the hat. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how are you wearing those sandals? I would have. Flip yeah. Bars. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Walks right up to us. Y'all never responded back to me. I was like, well, <laughs> let me see your work first. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's Anyways, funny. but no, he's a good guy. Um, food. I would say. I would say most of the barbecue companies that we've used in Charlotte mm -hmm. are always so helpful. They clean. I don't have to go behind them as planners. Um, it's a little different in some venues where they have the whole kitchen not available. Right. So I think it's just harder no matter what wedding. Right. If there's no kitchen available, regardless how great the catering company is. Because they're cooking out of a truck or they're bringing pans of food in. So there's that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We love our vendors. But of course, you know, being in industry so much, we're going to have our stories. Yeah. We're going to have Everybody your stories. We're going to we're going to do crazy things. So but there is also. always a story. Yeah. There's not one wedding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something happens not at one. each wedding. Every time. Like, no. Nothing bad. The bride and groom don't know, but we know. Saturday or no, Sunday. Sunday's yeah. wedding. Not one single thing happened. It was like one of those I started weddings. the day off. Maybe you just <laughs> skip. No. No, I did it was like the easiest wedding I've ever done in my life and it was a complicated wedding. There was a tea, tea ceremony. ceremony. There was like all these like cultural factors that were in play. The dad of the bride didn't speak any English. It was just so many things, but it was so like easy mm -hmm. and the family was so oh, I know was why that is. is. Was this your wedding? Well, yours. It was Julia's wedding, but then she got sick, so I ended up having to do it. Was Travis with you, though? No. No, oh. but the thing is, that couple... Travis is always with Amy, and that's why her weddings are always so... That they couple... They go so good. Chose... All the time. <laughs> I... And then me and Kathleen are like, I don't understand. And then we don't hear from Julia until after the fact. Julia's like, I almost died in the last three weddings. I like so I'm like, how does on my Amy own? <laughs> always have the best time? Um, and then you look at, like, because why? I'm G, and no, I it's get... because she takes the preferred vendors. <laughs> yes. And and. That makes a whole difference. I want my own preferred vendor list. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Well, the reason Van's wedding went so good <laughs> is because that couple chose every vendor from Heart Meadows' preferred vendor list. Yeah. They're like, we should know them because 
they were on that list. Heart Meadows. Like, I mean, if the couple stays with just like everyone on someone's preferred preferred vendor list, I mean, it's gonna be. Yeah. Place. I mean, yeah. It, it, I don't know why everyone just doesn't do that. People are trying to ball in a budget, which I it's get, all about money. Like, that reviews. I've noticed for the past three months of talking to people, and even as a planner and a bartender. It really is over four hundred dollars sometimes, mm -hmm. and it's just like you when they have no Instagram and they're having to buy a, a COI last minute. There's a reason why you're getting two photographers for nineteen hundred dollars all day in Charleston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't we haven't seen why yet, mm -hmm. but I'm letting you and know now. And they're over like, in a big yeah. ratty T-shirt, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> or they're late, snack. <laughs> or they're going out to the car and doing bad things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or the vendors are going out to the car doing bad things. Like yeah. that's what I'm saying. Nineteen hundred bucks. Yeah, That's not we just funny. trust the process. Trust mm -hmm. that we know because we are going to tell you. We're never going to, we are not going to steer you wrong because if we do, it is our heads. Like mm -hmm. we are going to, yeah, like it's going to make our life difficult. So trust me when we tell you use these vendors or I've vetted this person or I've done my research. Or I really recommend them. Right. Mm -hmm. Or this is how much it's going to cost anyway. Right. Like, or tell your friend to be really good at communicating with us so mm -hmm. we can be yeah. on the same page exactly so yeah we got it well this was fun <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for coming and hanging Yay. out with us i know it's we love it and we love you guys so this is a um a good episode yeah. so women we're wedding oh my god <laughs> I freak out every time. You don't. Why know is it so hard? Say <laughs> www. No, every time I get on there after you post it, and I'm like, why can she never remember this? Because my brain just freaks out. I put so much pressure that I'm gonna get it wrong. Like, feel my hands right now. I'm sweating even saying. Because it. you're embarrassed. It's scary. It's scary. <laughs> so what? Uh, then my next question is, is as a viewer, why don't you just have Julia say it every time? Because she. Because no, I like to watch her. She. She, she <laughs> likes for you to be silly and not know what the name of your own no. podcast is. Because she always wants to ends up being the first person to initiate the close but then we look at each other and then she gets this look on her face and i'm like she got it <laughs> she just <laughs> remember it and you no. forget it every time it's fine anyway <laughs> thank you guys for joining we love you appreciate you make sure you like follow and comment talk soon bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs>